you've seen how to make your linked list produce this output. So we got the add and the two string method working. I'm gonna close up the inner class node here. Now when it comes to implementing other methods, how do you know what they're supposed to do? So I've shown you how to do add here, uh, but what we're gonna do now is look at the Java doc. So if you right click and you could do, sh well, I'm not sure if show Java, Java doc will work. Nope, I just heard the bell that says it won't work. What we're gonna do is go to uh, source or super, no, super implementation, there we go. So you're gonna go to the super implementation because uh, this will be a super class that's about to open up eventually. All right, lengthy operation in progress, sounds exciting. I swear it worked faster on my other computer. Here we go. All right, when you're looking at this, remember this is an interface. We could scroll up to the top, we're on line 265. We scroll up to the top, somewhere up here. Eventually, here we go, it's an interface, not a class, which means it doesn't have any code, it just lists a bunch of public methods. And we were at the 255. Uh, okay, maybe not. Uh, there we go. 265. All right, the Java doc is above the method. So here's the method, and the Java doc is all this text above it right here. So I'll make that a little bigger. So this is the description, appends the specified element to the end of the list. And you can read all that, but this tells you the parameter which is E right there. It's the element to append to the list. Now, if you notice, it's not a void, it returns, and here's describing the return value, uh, which I believe is true if uh, it was able to add the element in, and then false if not. Uh, we shouldn't ever be returning false on ours. Let's see. Here we go. In particular, some lists may refuse to add null elements. That might be a case where you'd want to return false. Uh, but for us, we're always gonna be putting in uh, strings, so our strings won't be null, or at least we won't put in null strings, so it'll be fine, or we'll just return true. So this is how you can see add. Now, just open this up in a new tab right here. I'm gonna go back to the original MyLink list. So we could do the same thing for size. So just right click on size, navigate, go to uh, go to declaration, control B. Nope. What did I do? Go to source? Nope. Ay, ay, ay. Go to super implementation, control shift P. All right, third time's a charm. So here's the description of size. Now obviously it returns an integer, I already knew that. But it should return the number of elements in the list. That's not a surprise. Of course, that's what size would do. You could probably guess what is empty is gonna do without reading this. Let's go to remove. That's the next one we're gonna be writing. So right click navigate, go to super implementation. You can also control shift P. Here is remove. Remember you're reading the description above and not the description below. The one below refers to the next method down if you keep scrolling. So this right here is the description for remove. First occurrence of the specified element from the list. More formally removes an element with the lowest index, which also another name for the first. Uh, if such an element exists, returns true if the list contains a specified element. All right, so it removes it. Now this doesn't return the object, it returns true or false, a Boolean, and this describes when it returns true or false. Basically, these methods will return false if it was unable to either add or remove the object. So here is how you can get a much more detailed description about what you're supposed to be doing. As you go through, uh, a lot of these we won't do, but you could implement any of them you want. We know what clear does. All right, get, that may be one that's not super obvious. So we're gonna go to super implementation, control shift P, and returns this get, returns the element at a specified position in the list. Now keep in mind that anything that takes an index 
there uh, is a possibility that index could be out of bounds. So you see this throws. Any of them that take an index, they're going to throw an index out of bounds exception if the index is out of range, which means either too small, negative, or too big. Depending on if you're adding or getting, uh, depends on if it's okay to equal size or if it has to be less than size. So this is describing the conditions that would cause an index out of bounds exception to be thrown, and we'll cover that very soon. So if the index is negative, clearly it's an exception. And if the index is not okay to equal size, but it's okay to be, uh, and it's not okay to be bigger than size, but you want to be between zero is okay and up to, but not including size. So again, these are describing the conditions that we would throw an index out of bounds exception. And any of them, I know when I hit implement, it just, it just guesses. Uh, NetBeans just puts in arg0, arg1, not great names. And if you notice the control shift P, this is a way better name for uh, the parameter right here. And you could go ahead and paste an index set. So this takes an index right here. You can do that for every, every time there's an integer. So we could, let's see, it's a little dangerous to do a find or place here, but I'm going to do control F. When you have something highlighted, you press control F. It automatically puts it right in the find uh, text box here. And I'm going to hit next. It's going to go to the next occurrence of int space. There we go. Add, I'm going to change that to index. Remove, this is also an index. So I'm going to hit next. Index of. Now you got to be careful. If I just naively paste here, uh, this int is what it's returning. It's returning an index. It's not taking an index here. Um, I believe most of these objects should be called element, not arg0, but you can switch that later. So I'm just going to go through and int. Here we go. This one. E index sub list. These are both ints, so I'm not going to call them index uh, zero and one. Well, you can look at the uh, Java doc and see what are good names. All right, so that's back to the beginning, and I believe had it all starting. It's probably an index as well, and I think. We're done here. Yeah. So you want to convert all your arg zeros, arg ones. If there's an arg two, I don't think there is in this, but if there would be an arg two, you want to convert them to whatever they say over here so that it makes more sense. So again, you're going to see, usually see index and then the object's going to be called element usually. So that's how to see what the methods are supposed to do. That can also help you in the testing. So anything that has an index, could throw an index out of bounds exception. When you go to test it, you want to test it with good and bad indexes. And I'll describe this in more detail later, but there's boundary cases where the smallest valid index is usually going to be zero. So the you want to test one below that. So negative one is a great index to test. Uh, and you can test a larger negative number like negative 12, something like that. Uh, the highest index is supposed to be is either size or size minus one. So depending on what method you're testing, you want to make it one bigger than the valid value of index. And then you're going to make sure that the exception, the index out of bounds exception is thrown. And we'll cover all that uh, very soon.